Hello, good afternoon. I'm Peter Sharoshi and I welcome you all at uh, today's discussion in our Stories from the Frontlines live video series on Drug Reporter. Today we will speak about the situation in a country that was uh, hit really hard by the COVID-19 epidemic uh, with high rates of infections and uh, death rates uh, and the tough uh, lockdown uh, uh, regime. In this country is Italy. Uh, I have uh, two guests uh, here with me today uh, uh, who will uh, uh, explain how this epidemic affects the lives of uh, people who use drugs and uh, harm reduction services in, uh, in their country. So let me introduce my guests. Uh, first, we have uh, uh, Susanna Ronconi, uh, who joined us from Rome. Uh, she works from, for uh, Forum Droga, an organization promoting drug policy reform in Italy. She's also the board member of uh, ITARD, uh, the Italian Harm Reduction Network, and also my fellow member uh, of the Civil Society Forum on Drugs. Hello, Susanna. Hi, Peter. Hi. Uh, and uh, my other guest is uh, Pino Di Pino, coordinator of the Harm Reduction Office in the city of Venice, uh, and also the board member of ITARD, uh, the Italian uh, Harm Reduction Network. Buongiorno, Pino. Buongiorno. Ciao. <laughs> So thank you very much for uh, accepting our invitation. Uh, first, I would like to ask you, like, how, how are you guys? How is your uh, life uh, in quarantined Italy? Uh, do you see the light in the end of the tunnel? But, uh, I am at uh, home arrest and this is our fifth week. So it's a, it's a long time, uh, but anyway, we, we resist. Uh, we try to to be phys physically separated, but not separating from a, a social point of view. So we try to to maintain uh, uh, our relationship, uh, also even if in a virtual way. And uh, I have to say that um, sometimes I'm uh, working much harder than uh, than before, because of course we are trying to, to monitor the situation. And um, we are starting with uh, some researches on uh, what is going on. So we are trying to, uh, we are making also some campaign for, for uh, the rights of the most vulnerable people, you know? So we are busy. Mm. What about you, Pino? Yes, we are busy too because uh, most of the uh, harm reduction services and harm reduction professionals in Italy are still working. Uh, when we go on the streets, uh, people from all uh, around Italy tell, tell me that uh, we, the street worker, are, as people who use drugs, the only one by the streets, on the streets. So this is how it's going. Can you tell us how this uh, lockdown, lockdown affects their lives? Yeah, sure. There are um, different situations all around Italy because there are some cities in which the, um, the drug supply is not so easy as before, for example. And also the normal uh, activities of people who use drugs to get money are now impossible if you think about, for example, in touristic city like the one I live in or Rome or Florence, there are no tourists. So their economy, their income are very, very low. Okay, and we know that the quality of the drug of the heroin, especially about, uh, I'm talking especially about heroin is uh, going uh, down every day. Uh, today is worse than yesterday and better than tomorrow, maybe. And that's, I suppose, is why the, um, uh, the dealers are finishing their supplies. Mm -hmm. Susanna, do you have a kind of uh, uh, overview of the whole uh, country? So do you see like how different regions are uh, managing this crisis? Uh, yes, from, you mean from the point of view of harm reduction intervention? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I only want to add, add something about the drug markets because 
um, we know that the prices are, are increasing a lot. So we have problem with quality of drugs and also with prices of drugs. So the situation is critical, I think. Uh, with regard to harm reduction, you know that it, uh, in Italy, uh, we have a lot of differences between different regions. So um, uh, the central north of the country is uh, well covered in, also in this moment uh, and uh, as Pino says, um, the great part of the um, uh, outreach intervention and routine are, are uh, working now. Sometimes with, uh, with the different uh, opening hour, opening times and so on, but they do work. Uh, what great, we have a lot of problems in the south of Italy because the, the, um, we have a, a good system only in Naples, but in the southern regions we have, we have nothing at all. And uh, I have to say that we didn't uh, receive any clear guidelines from uh, regions. Uh, and I think that our uh, services work thanks to the responsibility uh, of the workers, I have to say that. Um, in the first two weeks of the, of the pandem pandemic, the first reaction was, uh, uh, well, let's close everything because people have no idea what was going on and uh, we have no um, deadlines, no, no, no information and so on. And, uh, but this was the first moment. Then everything is uh, working. Sometimes, for instance, the drop-in centers um, are not uh, uh, open because of the, the risk of overcrowding inside. But in this case, the workers uh, can distribute anyway syringes, naloxone, so they can guarantee the most uh, the most um, important intervention, I think. Um, and uh, so I think in, in general, where harm reduction is stable, uh, we are able to cope with the, the with this uh, situation. And and I think this is it's a good challenge for us, you know, because it also in a, a sort of self evaluation of our our system. Mm -hmm. I also hear uh, some news that now Italian people get uh, pissed off because of this quarantine. A lot of people uh, now break the quarantine and, uh, uh, and they just want uh, this ended. And also that there are some social distress in some cities that people are kind of revolting. Uh, is that true or is it what you also experience or it's, it's maybe exaggeration or? I, I don't know if you know what, what you mean, but in my opinion, is a little exaggeration. I live in Torino and I, I don't see anyone on the street, absolutely, until now. But you know, it's the, it's the fifth weeks. So I think that from now on, it would be uh, harder, I think. And then we have to say uh, that the pandemic is not the, the same for everyone. You know, uh, for instance, uh, uh, in, in my in, uh, in my case, I have a, a house. Uh, I have a connection to internet. I have a lot of friends. Uh, I can read the book and study, and so on. So I think that my life, okay, I can do it. Mm -hmm. But we have to think of more poor people and vulnerable people. And in this case, yes, I'm afraid it's too hard from, for them. And this is the problem. It's, it's, it's a classist uh, pandemic, I think. Yeah. So, uh, Pino, I suppose that uh, because of the uh, stop, stop of uh, flow of tourists, Venice is suffering a lot economically as well. And, Probably your clients lived uh, for also from uh, tourists indirectly at least. So uh, uh, how 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 people are feeling now? Like, uh, do they are they getting uh, distressed and uh, uh, desperate about the situation? I think mm, well, 
Uh, people who live on the streets, uh, I think, uh, um, is organizing their time and their economy in another way. Okay, but uh, as you say, uh, this city, uh, the lack of uh, people from abroad is a very big problem for them. Uh, uh, someone told me that uh, two hours uh, asking money in Venice uh, can, can, they can gain uh, until 20 or 40 euros in two hours. So now this money is, they are missing this money, okay? And uh, also, I, I think that also because the market changed, and so now uh, as we had uh, before the crisis, we had uh, uh, good heroin sold uh, by uh, people from uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, who don't live in this town, so now they cannot reach the town. There is low quality heroin, most dif uh, more difficult to, to find it. But I, I, I'm talking about heroin, but yesterday I was reading that uh, um, the, the tobacco, tobacco sellers are saying that uh, uh, CBD marijuana doubled uh, the, the, the sell list in last year, uh, month. So I think there is a very big problem about, uh, um, about getting the drug you want to get, okay? That's a problem for people who are addict. And, uh, but what, what I want to say is that, that our system, not only the harm reduction system, but also the treatment system, and I mean the access to substitutes of the opioids is changing anyway. So, for example, in cities like mine, where it was very difficult to, to get methadone or you had to wait a long time, okay? one week before the first counseling and getting methadone. Now, this uh, time is getting very, very short uh, because you uh, and, um, and people who ask for treatment are increasing now. I, I want, sorry, I want to, to, to stress something about uh, uh, OST, uh, because uh, uh, from one side, I, I, I think that uh, we have a, a, a good system about that, because, you know, methadone in Italy is guaranteed by the national health system, is free of charge. We have 600 administration centers, so it's it's a well organized um, part of our system, uh, but uh, anyway, we are we are um, learning something from this crisis. Uh, one thing is what the Pino was saying, and the other is that uh, the, they are uh, increasing the number of uh, take home methadone. So um, yeah. in this period. Uh, many many people can have uh, uh, methanol doses for two or three weeks or even more, and um, th this is already included in the methadone uh, protocol. But usually, doctor adopt this model in a very restrictive way. While now they are opening, you know, and in, in this this is very important, both for people who can self regulate and self-administrate their lives in a more uh, free way. Uh, and it's important also for the administration center because they avoid overcrowding and they limited the number of, uh, of uh, clients going there. So I think this very is one of the more uh, optimistic side of the crisis because we are learning something that could work better also in ordinary moments, you know? Yeah, that's a very interesting point what you raised, both of you, because last time we had a discussion with uh, people from Prague and Bratislava, and they also said that maybe this crisis will be also an opportunity, you know, to change some of the outdated uh, rules which were 
uh, not uh, effective anymore and maybe we can change some policies for for good uh, yeah. what do you experience about uh, for example about police and uh, uh, law enforcement like uh, do they still arrest people for for uh, using drugs or do they now tolerate uh, this or what do you see about that uh, at the beginning of the crisis uh, there were some news from uh, cities uh, like big cities like Rome or Milan and people who live on the streets not only people who use drugs and live on the streets were uh, were not arrested but uh, there is something like uh, a fee and were fit uh, for living on the streets what i experience is that now this is not happening. For example, in Venice, we don't have nobody is being uh, chaired for being on the streets during the crisis. And that's also another lesson we are learning. Uh, I think uh, for people who live on the street and now uh, city councils and city systems don't know where to put them to let them stay in case of they are uh, ill and so on. We are also learning that in these years, I think um, the public uh, in Italy uh, was very angry with uh, people who live on the streets. And so they ask more police, more, uh, more punishments and so on. And this uh, uh, public uh, and political uh, uh, announcements uh, um, took us to a situation that now, for example, there are cities in which there is only one skelter put for people who live on the streets to sleep in. If we, for example, had two or three skelters, now we, we should have a place for them to stay. No? So that there is, this is also another lesson we are learning that uh, public services for people who live on the streets, for people who use drugs, and this is also uh, valid for uh, OST, no? is not uh, only a, a right, a human right for people, but it's a, it, it could also be a protection for all the community. No, imagine now if uh, in a group of 10 uh, people on the streets, one gets, uh, gets the, the COVID. No, in two days, the 10 people will get it because of the, um, no, and, and they, or if one of them is uh, symptomatic, as they told here, where do you put him? Where, 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 do he, where does he go or she goes? No, do we have to let him go to the hospital? Well, no, and, and so on. And so the, the lack of skelters in cities uh, is one of the problems we are experiencing now. Okay, and yeah, what, it, what a, yeah, go ahead, Susanna, if you want to add something. No, I, only that uh, thinking of uh, Torino, the situation in Torino, uh, homeless people, um, are in a very hard situation um, because the first response was let's close the shelters. It was the, the, the first response by the, the, the municipality uh, it, it, and it was absurd, of course. Uh, now they are trying to organize a, a, a more effective system, but for instance, we um, realized that one problem is not only to have uh, uh, not shelter enough, but also that sometimes we have too big shelters. I mean, shelter where there are too many people crowded in a small room, in a small place. And I think that that is uh, interesting. Uh, and the lesson learned could be uh let's organize a more human uh situation where there are uh, many uh, not so uh, so many people and where the dimension is more familiar and this is interesting 
what Pino said, that this is uh, useful for the quality of life of homeless people, but it's useful also for the whole community. So you see, we are learning a lot of things. I don't know if we will be able to, um, to change something after the crisis. This is a common question, you know. But we are taking note of everything from this perspective. And I, I think we will, uh, must, we will must be able to, to give feedback to our municipalities about uh, all that. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about uh, one other uh, vulnerable group, which is uh, prisoners. So do you see what is the situation in prisons? We saw some yeah. uh, dramatic pictures of, uh, uh, you know, rev revolts. Yeah. And can you talk can, about that? I can say that uh, prisoner uh, now is, is the group in, in the worst situation, in a, in a very bad condition in Italy. Um, because uh, um, also in prison, of course, the first uh, answer to the crisis was to block everything. So uh, they, they blocked uh, the, the meeting with the family, parents, uh, and so on. Uh, they blocked the volunteers, so prisoners couldn't, couldn't meet anyone inside the prison. Uh, they blocked the people who um, in day, uh, daily live uh, and so on. And uh, they didn't give information and they didn't give any alternatives, for instance, to different kind of uh, uh, meeting with, uh, with the families, uh, virtual meeting and so on. And of course, the prisoner felt in a trap. Uh, and uh, feeling like that, uh, we had a lot of riots inside prison all over the country. Um, and we, we have now um, 60,000 of prisoners, and this riot, riot involved 15,000 of people, so a, a really a great number. And unfortunately, the, the outcome of this riot was uh, 13 deaths, 13 prisoners died and we are still waiting for uh, to, to know the cause of this death we have organized a campaign that uh, is named uh, a campaign for truth and justice because it's not clear what happened and uh, now things are slowly changing but um, only thanks to civil society a thanks to the Ombudsman for Prisoner Rights. Uh, so the government make a decree telling that um, uh, prisoners with minor crimes uh, would have uh, been uh, released and uh, on the, some others will uh, assess to alternative uh, form of uh, sentences and so on. Uh, but this process is very, is very uh, low because uh, um, we think that it's necessary to release about 5,000 people to gain a more safe, a safer situation inside prison. And we know that only four or 500 people have been already released, you know. And we have already tens of um, cases of a positive prisoner inside prison. So the idea is to have a, a epidemic bomb. Uh, we are waiting for an explosion, you know. So this is, I think that is the worst uh, situation uh, about the pandemic now, prisons. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also hear uh, news that uh, it's very hard to access uh, masks and gloves and all this uh, protective equipment in Italia. Uh, what about you, Pino? Like, do you have uh, access to these things and uh, hand sanitizers and all this, uh, all this stuff? Uh, me and my colleagues, uh, fortunately, yes. But I know that uh, some colleagues around Italy uh, did wait for one week before having PPI, and uh, and that that's why also uh, 
as Susanna said before, in the first week, uh, uh, some arm reduction services were stopped. No, because uh, the, at the beginning, there was a debate uh, between uh, uh, rights of people who use drugs to access to our harm reduction services and the safety of uh, people who work in harm reduction uh, services. I think, as Susanna said, that uh, the responsibility of people engaged in this job uh, uh, made it possible to have uh, DPI for everybody and still work now. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, yeah. uh, but as you said, masks and DPI in Italy is a huge problem. If you think that, for example, in Lombardia, I read uh, a few days uh, ago that in, Lomb in Lombardia, which is the region of Italy with the highest number of uh, contagious uh, people who work, uh, doctors and nurses who work in the hospitals didn't get the DPI as soon as possible. So that's, uh, that's why uh, we are buying and receiving, uh, the, the Italian government is buying and receiving uh, masks from, mask from abroad from uh, Saudi Arabia, from China, and so on. It's like, uh, as, as we, as a system, as a country, we, were, uh, we weren't uh, uh, ready for such uh, a crisis. Now we are buying everything at the last moment. Mm -hmm. In many cities now in Europe, uh, uh, HIV and hepatitis C testing completely stopped because uh, there is, a, there is a concern that, uh, you know, it's dangerous to deal with the saliva and uh, blood samples of people. How is that in Italy? Do you, do you still provide uh, testing? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Sincerely, I, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't have information about that, but what I know that uh, in uh, low threshold services, uh, we use it to, to, to make a rapid test, you know. And uh, now I think that nobody is, is doing that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that this is one of the problems we have. Mm -hmm. and did, you, did you discuss whether to uh, test uh, uh, clients of harm reduction programs for coronavirus? Like, do you have tests maybe to test them if, if, they, have, if they show symptoms or you just send them to uh, to the to the hospital or how no, does we it have we have not the possibility to make the test we have to to send them to to the hospital and we have not yet data about uh, how many um, people who use drug is in fact mm -hmm. i think we will need time to have this kind of data okay P pino also do you have any clients who, who are already infected or we had one now in our sculpture when people come from, for example, from the shower, we take them the temperature mm -hmm. and now nobody has symptoms, okay? But we cannot say they are not uh, uh, infected with the virus, okay? But in Italy, the, the test is done to people who have symptoms or people who, lives, uh, who live with people with symptoms. So if you don't have any fever or any uh, cold, uh, you don't get the test. You don't get the test done, okay? So now we had one, one client, not, not, not so many, mm -hmm. only one in Venice. Uh, I, I was asking because for example, in, uh, in Denmark, in Copenhagen, they now starting a, a bus, like a mobile service, and they will test uh, uh, people on the street for co COVID virus. So do you think that would be useful also in Italy? Or you don't have any opinion about that? No, I think it, it would be very useful, but in, uh, I think it, uh, it's impossible now for us, I think. Uh, also because uh, we, uh, we are very uh, critical towards uh, our government because we, in general, I, I, we are doing very few tests, in our opinion. We have not uh, a, an effective policy. 
in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this field. And it is a great debate in our country. And uh, so I think that we have uh, no, no possibility to implement uh, uh, such, a, such a service. And I, I'm very sorry for that, but it is not, mm -hmm. it's not possible, I think. And what about the local governments like city and regional level governments? Do you have any good uh, cooperation with your local governments? You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, there are, as, as Susanna said before in Italy, harm reduction situation is not the same in all the country and in the same region is not the same, the, uh, the same in all the cities. So it depends on uh, region and city policies before the crisis, you know. Uh, in cities where there was a, a good uh, uh, a good policy and harm reduction oriented policies, it still go on. I think like in Bologna for Italy, uh, where some there are a lot of sculpture, uh, they um, uh, they now offer the opportunity to people who live on the street to stay in the sculpture all the day long. If they want just to protect them from the from the virus and protect people from the virus uh, as well, but other cities where I think where there is a, a different policy is still going on and harm reduction is still hard to uh, cooperate with other ag agencies. I think so. Mm -hmm. So if you could uh, like sit down with your, I don't know, minister or government for five minutes, what, what would be your uh, questions? What would be your demands to, the, to, to your government? What is what, what is what you really need from government? The first thing I think it would be to, um, to say that the, the lives of uh, vulner the most vulnerable people do matter. <laughs> and if they matter, the, the, the front line of the law special services uh, is crucial, it's important. So the first question is, uh, let's make uh, harm reduction services stable, uh, covered from a uh, financial point of view, uh, and, um, and uh, stable all over the country, not only in some region. And this is the, the, the first, uh, the first uh, thing. I think um, we are working on that since many years, and uh, I think that we will we would make a good use of this crisis. I think this is uh, my my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think that in Italy there is a lack of multi-agency approach uh, to drug uh, drug use phenomenon and. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, human issues which are now uh, treated like uh, public order problems and law enforcement duty, you know? And that's why what I, I should ask to our government uh, or, and, and not, mm, I, I ask uh, what Susanna said and also that we need a multi-agency approach uh, in this situation of crisis more than ever. Because if I could sit with my local government or with my national government, there are a lot of things we know, we people who work on the streets and all, of course people who use drugs now know about this uh, problem and the needs of vulnerable people that should be uh, parts of the strategy in a crisis. You know, we are now uh, experiencing a pandemic about uh, uh, an influential, more than an influential virus, but this is, mm, this virus is getting a lot of problems, you know, uh, enormous, uh, huge problems to our communities and 
as, as I said before, if we do care about people or vulnerable people, we are caring about our communities, local communities. That's what I should said. And we need a multi-agency approach. We need arm reduction to be uh, guaranteed all in all the country. As Susanna said before in Italy, the north of Italy has uh, the, the most services in, uh, in Italy. But as south you go, the more south you go, the less uh, harm reduction services you find, no? for example. And also in my region, for example, Venice is the only city who still who has in, uh, an harm reduction services. There are no harm reduction services all around the cities. You know? and, and that's what we need, mm -hmm. I think. Why, why is it that in the south part of Italy you don't have harm reduction? Like, is it lack of uh, professionals there, or there is no money to start programs, or why is it? In general, the south of Italy is, is uh, more weak uh, with regard to the health, the public health system in general, and uh, so it's not uh, easy to guarantee the the, the high level of services in general, and it, it is also um, more difficult to, to make uh, innovation, you know? It's a sort of um, weak and rigid system, I think, and this is the problem. I want to stress another aspect because we are a, a, a big debate in Italy now just about the um, public health system. Because in this, in this crisis, not only in the drug field, but in general, we realize that to have a, a strong uh, public health system is so important. And uh, uh, our system is still a uh, universalistic one, but uh, um, it's, um, there are, I think, 20, we have 20 years of continuous financial cuts to this system and the strong privatization process. So during this crisis, we, uh, we are discussing about that again, because we realize that uh, only a public health approach can cope with, with this kind of pandemic. And as I think in the future, we will have to cope many times because we we have um, i think we have understood that uh, this kind of pandemic is not a uh, isolated cases but is uh, something that are uh, is related to many strategic fields so climate uh, and so on globalization and so on so we we have to think of uh, of our national and international system. So I think that we will put the drug issues inside a more general debate uh, that deals with the, uh, the 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 need of support, finance, and uh, innovate our public health system. I think this is. Political issues very very important. I'm very happy that and you man mentioned this. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Pino, if you want to add something. Uh, and also our uh, uh, criminal criminal justice system, I think, will be another important debate to do after this crisis. Because as Susanna remembered before, we have in Italy we have sixty thousand people in jail. And most of them are in jail because of uh, our uh, drug uh, law, you know, uh, for detention of uh, marijuana or detention of uh, little quantities of any other drug. So we have uh, our jails are full, are empty. We have uh, more people, 11,000 people more than the capacity of our jail system in our jails. And so our criminal, criminal justice system is another problem we have to, to put in the agenda after this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we have a lot of lies about the public health system, 
we should uh, we as arm reduction networks and uh, not only arm reduction networks or uh, I think also about uh, human rights network uh, networks in Italy will uh, will have to build a lot of alliances about this. But now we have an argument more. Yeah. Thank you, and I'm very happy that you mentioned this uh, social dimensions of this uh, crisis because we had a discussion with the Correlation European Harm Reduction Network uh, and we came to the same conclusions that now we have to move beyond the traditional harm reduction advocacy, so we need to uh, uh, you know, address the structural uh, uh, causes of, 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 of the current crisis and, uh, and, and the crisis is before. And uh, we, we were also discussing uh, uh, new ideas to, to, uh, to, you know, to prevent a, a bigger humanitarian crisis. And one such idea is, uh, is the basic uh, income. I, I also wanted to ask you about that. Like, what, would, what do you think about this idea to introduce uh, an unconditional basic income uh, during the crisis, which the Spain, Spanish government, I think, is now uh, considering? Uh, is there any discussion about this in Italy, or what do you? What is your personal opinion about this? I absolutely agree, and there is also here in Italy a campaign for a quarantine income. <laughs> Uh, but in general, in Italy, we have to improve our welfare system from this perspective because we have a very limited uh, income, to be honest, only for very poor people and for a small part of very poor people. So I think that a, a basic income is another, another thing, I think. And um, uh, we, uh, some municipality now have introduced some support to the income of a family during the crisis, but is a sort of a, it is an emergency measure, you know. It, it is better than nothing, but I think that we have to uh, rethink of, of, of our global. Uh, welfare system uh, in this uh, in, in this perspective, and I think that we are already discussing about that. But our government is not uh, very open, I think now. But mm -hmm. Let's hope. Okay, you know, in uh, Italy was if the Italy was the first country hit by this uh, pandemic in Europe, and uh, in many uh, cities, we are looking at you as kind of our future, you know, like what will we do in like two or three or four weeks. So now we are, we can imagine that we are doing some kind of time, time travel. So we can ask you from the future, what do you recommend uh, us who are maybe before those problems you, we were, you, you already faced? So do you have any like tips or recommendations to other people working in harm reduction in other cities in Europe? I think. Uh, oh, okay. 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 I I think this uh, crisis is good lesson uh, to to make uh, uh, our system more flexible. For example, as Susanna said before, we are experiencing that now some sculptors are changing their timetable, their uh, hours. No, for example, here. Uh, the, the shower service is uh, uh, four days a week instead of three days a week as before, uh, four hours per day and not two hours per day as before. So this is the first lesson. We have to, um, as people, as to be protected, we have to uh, increase our offers. Some other uh, uh, Italian harm reduction projects are changing, are completely changing their mission. I think, uh, especially outreach projects in party settings. Okay, there is no party, no, no, no rape, no party. They are now changing their mission, and they are, uh, for example, in Rome. They are thinking about uh, uh, going on the streets and do harm reduction work uh, and uh, to deliver methadone on uh, 
uh, on the streets or um, uh, syringes programs. So, uh, other th one other thing we are experiencing is that uh, we can also use with some um, with some clients. We can also use online counseling. Um, uh, 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 tools, okay, uh, and so that's what I think. I think that uh, as we work on the streets or we work uh, in contact with the uh, 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 always phenomenon that is changing every month, we can be flexible as well. Susanna. Um, something about uh, the situation in general in Italy. Um, I have to say that uh, locking down has been useful, even it's hard to support, to support, but it has been useful. And now after five weeks, uh, um, our infection line is decreasing and we, are, we now start to see some results. So I think it has been I think the right choice, but um, I think that uh, our government uh, make a campaign uh, based on the, uh, the citizens' uh, respect of the rules and uh, not based enough on the citizens' empowerment responsibility and so on. In a certain sense, there, are, there has been a too militar <laughs> approach uh, to the, also to the locking down. And uh, it's a mistake, I think, because uh, it's hard to think that we can govern such a situation in a law and order perspective or in a, rep a repressive perspective. Uh, but this is a, a general, a general problem, you know, because uh, uh, if you don't take care of the social relationship normally, it's difficult to uh, to have good cohesion and good social relationship during a crisis. So I think it's a very general discourse. I I realize. But uh, it's important, for instance, uh, some of us are, pro are um, making the proposal to making of irregular migrants regular in this crisis. Yeah. Uh, I think that Portugal had already done it, and we are discussing now. And it would be obvious, because if you are not included, you cannot be responsible too. And, and you and the government cannot ask the people who are not included to be responsible. So, of, of course, it's clear for us, but it's not clear clear for our politicians. <clears throat> but this is another big level, <clears throat> sorry, of discussion in the future. I think that it, indeed it is also a lesson learned from this crisis. We have to take care of inclusion and of social cohesion. This is important. And I think that harm reduction has a, some, has a role to play in this direction too. Thank you very much. I think that was really good uh, conclusion of our uh, discussion today. Thank you very <laughs> much for taking time and uh, being with us today. And thank you for those who are watching us uh, online on Facebook. Uh, this was the stories from the front lines, drug reporters live video session. Um, and uh, please join us uh, next time. Uh, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, our plan is that the next country we will uh, discuss will be South Africa, where uh, there are some also some interesting uh, developments. Um, and uh, we will update you on, on social media. And uh, don't forget, uh, stay safe and stay informed. Thank you. And Peter, I, I want to, to, to thank you and the uh, Rice Reporter Foundation because uh, to make a, a, a good information and a good communication is very important in this moment. Thank you. Grazie mille. Thank you very much. Thank you. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao.
Okay. Okay. We are still connected. How was it? Yeah, I 